Hello everyone, it's good to talk to you again. We need to start the next section of our Cornell notes about sex-linked traits, which means that we need to talk about the chromosomes that establish our sex. And so this says chromosomes and our sex, whether we are defined as being a female or a male. So please add this to your notebook notes that we'll ask for copies of in about three weeks. So we carry chromosomes in what we call homologous pairs. And so we carry two copies of number one and two copies of number two and two copies of number three. And each copy we get from our biological mother or our biological father. So the biological father contributes one copy of number one and the biological mother contributes one copy of number one and they come together. So therefore we have a pair, fine. So we have two copies of one, two copies of two, two copies of three, fine. And this goes all the way down to 22. And there's many alleles that are carried on one through 22, and we refer to those as being autosomal, fine. But then when we get to our 23rd pair, that pair is a little different because the 23rd pair of chromosomes, this pair here establishes our sex. whether we are biologically male or female, okay? So how we define males and females is we say that if the individual is XX for their 23rd pair, they are female. And if they are XY for their 23rd pair, they are male. So it's biologically determined by our 23rd pair of chromosomes. Cool. So when you put these chromosomes under the microscope, it's really interesting. So you have number 23, and number 23, and if they are the large X's, we refer to this individual as being female. But males, males are different. Males carry one of the large 23rd chromosomes. But what makes us male is this second chromosome here. As a male, we carry a much smaller X chromosome. It is much, much smaller. In fact, this chromosome is only about a third as big as the larger X. It's much smaller. And this is referred to as a male. And people say, well, hold it. If it's XX for female and it's XY for male, why are you drawing the X here for the male? And that's a really good question. There's a specific reason why we consider males to be XY. So when we draw a chromosome as an X, please understand, or remember actually, well both, that the chromosome really looks like this. And that's where it has the two chromatids and has the centromere in the middle, like such. So these two are the same thing. Well, what happens in this small chromosome that males carry is the top two chromatids look like such, but the bottom two chromatids are extremely thin. I mean, really, really thin. And so what happens is these two thin chromatids here, these chromatids tend to stick together. So when you look at this under a microscope, you see the top two chromatids separated, but since these two are so thin, they tend to stick together like this. Well, since these two chromatids stick together, they look like one large chromatid. Therefore, when you look at it under a microscope and you see an individual that looks like this, and then you see, whoop, you see that, they define that as being X, Y. The reason why we call the second chromosome in males Y because those bottom two chromatids stick together because they're so thin. Therefore, the male is XY. Okay, so again, females, females, two large X chromosomes, and then we define males as XY, and that Y chromosome is a small chromosome. Okay, so that's the 23rd pair of our homologous chromosomes establish our sex, male versus female. Okay, so what does this have to do with genetics? Well, 
any allele that's carried on the 23rd chromosome we call sex linked. So what we need to start in our notes today are called sex linked traits. There are certain traits that are specifically linked to our sex chromosomes. So what we've talked about thus far are called autosomal traits. And if a trait is autosomal, that means it's carried on one of the chromosomes, one through 22. And so the, one of the early genetics problems that we did was about cystic fibrosis. And cystic fibrosis is carried on chromosome number seven. So here's a homologous pair of chromosome number seven. And so if you'll recall that cystic fibrosis is recessive, since all of us are healthy, all of us carry and express the healthy, typical dominant F. But it's possible that some of us, especially Caucasians, carry the recessive allele. And so when we write these alleles as letters, this is what we really mean. They are genes located physically on a chromosome. But that's only 1 through 22. What we're going to start today is called sex-linked. So sex-linked traits are carried on chromosome number 23. And it's the larger X chromosome. When you guys come back to me for IB, there are certain alleles that are carried on that smaller sex chromosome in males, carried on that Y. Those are called holandric traits. We're not going to talk about those now. We will talk about those later in IB. So when we talk about sex linked now, what we're talking about are the larger X chromosomes. And there are two classic examples that you always talk about when it comes to sex linked traits. There's a bleeding disorder called hemophilia. And this is a recessive blood clotting disorder. Now, when most of us get a cut or any blunt force trauma and our blood starts to leak out of our veins or more seriously out of our arteries, our blood clots to block that bleeding. And a hemophiliac is at risk because their blood doesn't clot properly. Now, there's different severities of hemophilia. Uh, some are very mild cases, some are very serious. The other sex-linked trait that we will talk about is color blindness. Now, these individuals can still see. When we say blind, doesn't mean that they can't see anything. They can still see just like you and I. But then why do we call it blind? Because they don't see certain colors. The most severe case of color blindness, they see the world as if it's a black and white image. Okay? In fact, the most common forms of color blindness are blue green. Individuals have a hard time telling the difference between blue and green, or red and green. And so if you, you were to take a red and green pen and put them side by side, they'd still be able to see the pens, all right? But the difference is that while we see green and we see red, they would see two different shades of gray, okay? They don't see this vibrant red and this forest green. They would see gray as if it's a black and white movie, okay? So what's interesting is that these disorders are, get a load of this, 10 times more common in males. Much, much more common in males than in females, okay? So we need to sit down and do some work with the genetics and figure out why these are 10 times more common in males than females. So for every one colorblind female, you will find 10 colorblind males. For every one female hemophiliac, you will find 10 male hemophiliacs. So when it comes to sex-linked traits, it is, it is a huge advantage to be female. 
So let's talk about colorblindness. So we said that colorblindness is recessive, which means that most of us have typical vision. We can see the color red, we can see the color green, we can tell the difference. So let's call big B our dominant allele for typical vision. So colorblindness is a recessive disorder and any individual who carries and expresses the recessive B, the lowercase b, is colorblind. But don't forget, this is sex-linked. So you have three choices for the female. So here's XX, XX, and XX. So she can be a big B, big B. So just, um, just like blood typing, we attach the allele to the X. This is what we mean by sex linked. So if she, so she is X big B, X big B. Well, first of all, she's female, as are these other two. So these three are all female. But since she's big B, big B, she has typical vision. Of course she has typical vision. She carries and expresses the dominant allele. Well, what else could she be? Well, she could be big B, little b. Okay, she still carries and expresses the dominant B, so she still has typical vision. However, could she pass this little b on to her offspring? Absolutely. Therefore, we call her a carrier. She still has typical vision, but she could give birth to a colorblind child. Or she could be X little b, X little b. Still female, but here she's colorblind. So these are the three choices for a female. All right, let's take a look at the male. The male is either XY or he's XY. Get a load of this. As a male, he only have two choices. Why do you only have two choices? Because as a male, he only has one X. So the male either gets the dominant allele on his X or he gets the recessive allele on his X. It's one or the other. So both of these individuals are male. This individual, because he carries and expresses the dominant B, he has typical vision. But this male, since he carries and expresses the recessive allele, he's colorblind. So notice, when it comes to sex-linked traits, there's no such thing as a carrier male. We can't hide a second allele because we only have one X, because we're male. So when we do these sex-linked genetics problems, there's always five choices. There's three choices for the female, and there's two choices for the male. All right, please include this in your notes, and then we'll do a couple of practice problems after this, and then we'll do our genetics problem set number three. Excellent. Talk to you soon.